What I want to do at the end of every chapter is solve some actual problems that are applicable. Now, the problems we're going to solve now are pretty basic because we've only covered very basic things in Python. But as you'll see throughout the series, the problems will get increasingly more and more difficult until eventually you're solving the sorts of problems that you see on my channel, for example. So with that being said, we have three problems today. Let's get started. So here it says the equation for the height of a thrown ball is y is minus one half gt squared plus v naught t. T is time, y is the height of the ball, v naught is the initial upward thrown speed, and g is gravity. And it says that Jim throws his ball at 10 meters per second, whereas Mark throws it at 50 meters per second upward. Plot the height of each ball as a function of time. So for plotting something as a function of time, we first need an array of times. So I'm going to go mp.lin space. We're going to get a bunch of times all equally spaced apart together. We're going to go from 0 to 2 seconds, and I'm going to get 100 of them. All right, so that's our time. And uh, I'm going to set uh, g is equal to 9.81. Uh, v naught y, or sorry, v naught um, j, which is Jim, is 10. And v naught mark is equal to 15. And I can get the height as a function of time. Remember here that this is the time. So at each one of these times, I can plug it in and get the height using this formula, y. And so I can do this using this um, the advantages of NumPy's arrays. For example, if I go t squared, it will square all the values in t consecutively. So I just need to do this operation on t. So I would go uh, y for y underscore uh, j equals um, minus 1 half times uh, g times t squared plus v naught j times t. So that's... Uh, Jim and then Mark would be the same except with M's here. So these are the two formulas. And uh, I need to make sure that this is a zero. So I have this. Now I have my arrays of Y's which correspond to each T. Remember, I'm just doing operations on T and I can do that with NumPy arrays. And then I can plot dot plot uh, T Y J. For example, this is uh, Jim's ball and uh, T Y M. So obviously Mark's ball, he throws it up faster, so it goes in the air longer. And of course the axis, I can make the labels for them. Plot.x label, uh, let's call this um, time. Plot.y label and height. So pretty simple to make these labels. I can also add things like a grid, plot.grid, right? If I wanna make a legend, then for each one of these uh, lines, I need to add a label so I could go Label is equal to Jim. Label is equal to Mark. And then now that they're labeled, I can go plot.legend and that will make a legend as well. So pretty simple. This is again, very simple stuff. Just getting used to all these sorts of things. Go through it yourself. Make sure you understand it. Uh, here's a problem about a poem, right? So this is poem that I want you to store in a variable. I can copy and paste it like this, and this will store the lines of the poem in an array. So I can go poem uh, one, it will return the first line of the poem, which you see here. Everything is separated by a comma. Uh, it turns out these slashes, you don't actually need them. So just ignore those. And I can index to get any line of the poem I want. And I want to loop through the lines of the poem, and if the line contains the substring we, then print line blank contains we, where blank is the line number. Pause the video, think about that. I'll go through it. So I would go for line in poem. Remember poem is a list, so it's gonna loop through each line in the loop. And then I would say if line in, or sorry, if um, we in line, remember that line is a string. So it's gonna say if we in we've braved the belly of the beast, well that is true. And if that's true, I want to print line i'm going to use this uh formatting thing line blank contains we and i have to dot format and it wants the line number so because we need the line number we actually need to use an enumeration loop so i need i which is the line number and then i need to surround poem in this enumerate here and uh i don't have this here so i need to make sure i go i in this format function and it will print, it'll say line zero, one, two, three, four, five. So each of these first lines contains it, and then the last two lines of the poem do not contain it. So once again, a simple example, but we're combining, we're building things up here. This is important. Okay, and finally we have problem three. 
So you want to add up every number from 1 to 999999, except for those that can be divided by 4 and those that can be divided by 6. And this is an excellent example of using for loops and if statements. So I would start with saying summation is equal to 0. And I would say for i in range, uh, remember we want to go to 999999, so we need one greater. So that's this number here. And we're going to say, so we, if it's divisible by 4, and except for those that are divisible by 4 and those that are divided by 6. So remember for something to be divisible by 4, look at uh, 16 modulo 4 for example, 0, 17 modulo 4. Remember the modulo gives the remainder. So if it's divisible by 4, then its modulo is 0. So if it goes 17 modulo 4 equals equals 0, false. That tells me 17 modulo 4 is not divisible, is, is uh, 17 is not divisible by 4. This says true, 16 is divisible by 4. So we're looping through the loop. I would say if i uh, modulo um, 4 equals equals 0. And we want to add it if it's not divisible by 4. So if it's not divisible by 4 and it's not divisible by 6, then I'd say summation equals summation plus i. And it evaluates and I get a value for my summation, right? So now what's happening? It says, if it's divisible, this is not divisible by 4. Remember, i modulo 4 equals equals 0 is, it is divisible by 4. This will return true if it's divisible by 4. So this returns, this whole thing not returns false if it's divisible by 4. So I encourage you to pause the video and have a think about this. So we want to make sure that it's not divisible by 4 and not divisible by 6, right? And this, remember this here says divisible by 4 and you get your summation. So anyways, pause the video, take some time to think about this. Um, and that's it for today. So this should establish the very basics of Python. And next time we'll start getting into more into NumPy and using those arrays because those are really what's going to be the bulk of the numerical and the really hefty computational side of things. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you.